Hello everyone. Hello Terry in Ohio. I just thought I'd start a little bit earlier and we can get the hellos and everything done and quick and all out of the way. I'm sure you're all looking forward to seeing me work with this lovely, lovely machine this evening. Or afternoon, wherever you are in the world, of course. <laughs> so I've just switched her on and I've set her to the fourth on temperature using my middle button. And that will, um, once she comes to temperature, we'll start playing. Hello, Ords29. How are you, my lovely? Thank you for stopping in. I'm really glad to see you. I hope you're all having a good day today, guys. I know I am. Because <laughs> I've got this lovely new mink machine. It's going to be a lovely live, I think. I'm going to teach you guys some great stuff to do with this machine. And uh, in all honesty, this 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 version of foiling is a lot simpler than um, the foil press foiling. Hi Caroline. Hi Emma. I have been in. I have been interested in this. What makes this different from a lamination machine? Well, what makes this different from a lamination machine, um, Terry, is that in a normal laminator. One of the rolls, because you have a set of two rolls that will be turning for your um, item to go through. Normally, one of those rolls is heated on a laminator. On a mink machine, all of the rolls are heated. So inside a mink machine this big, you actually have four individual rolls, top and bottom, and each one of them are heated instead of just the bottom ones being heated. In a, and in a normal laminator, you would only have one roll top and bottom. I'm good, thanks. Looking forward to another amazing live. Oh, thank you so much for saying so. I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much for being here, my lovely. And hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> uh, I'm very tired tonight, but had to watch. Oh, thank you so much for coming in, my lovely. And I hope you, you get a decent sleep tonight and that you feel a lot better tomorrow. So we've managed to get it up to heat. I'm just going to hang on for another couple of minutes to see if anybody else is going to drop in and say hello. We, I do have a lot of different things that we can be playing with on this as well. So I know you're all going to you're all going to love it, love, 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 love it. So I'm going to get some of these foils out that I used the other day as well, which I should have pulled out. I got online, but I have them now. Hi, Kirsty. Thank you for popping in. How are you doing? Perfect. Thank you for answering that. Now I need one. Um, you don't just have to necessarily go for a mink. Um, Gina K has also just bought out her fuse machine. Um, in the UK, you can only get a mink in this size, which is a very big machine it's got a very large mouth on it um if you get the gina k one it's about half the size and it has a six inch mouth which is a lot better for card making in my honest opinion oh is hannah gosling uh, has hannah come in as well and she's trying to fly under the radar <laughs> Does it come with instructions? Yes, it does come with an instruction manual which tells you everything on how to set it up correctly and all the all of the bibbony bits. So like I will show you how to foil with this correctly on this live. It's gonna be it, it's gonna be simple and it's gonna be step by step. I'm not gonna go too fast and I will stop and take questions. Um because there are quite a few things that we are able to do with this, and there is one technique that I'm dying to show you because it is brilliant and um, I had a comment deleted by admins and CC group warning people that they would be banned for posting links and they told me no one had been banned oh hi Rhonda thank you for coming how are you doing my lovely I hope you're well I think Jake has told me everything he has done this week oh bless him congratulations to him as well by the way um on on his uh, army thing doing the army thing i haven't done the army thing in years um outright lie well it doesn't surprise me i need to move away from that subject very very quickly um right so i've got some of my crafty critter foils out this evening so this is the summer fun 
I've got the um, turquoise again and the rainbow hollow. Not just that, I've also got some foils that I've ordered off of the internet. So these come in cheap form, which are all these lovely different ones. I've got some nice rainbow hollow. I've got some nice copper looking, another different version of rainbow hollow there. Um, a nice pink one, actually, and some nice gold and silver. There is some silver behind that one. Uh, let's just quickly catch up with the comments. Um, I will not, I'm not sure I was massively tried to fly under the radar. I was worried my message got flagged for poor language. Oh, there's no such thing as poor language here. <laughs> Living the dream. We're all living the dream, aren't we? Um, hello, Crafty Stacy Lou. Thank you for joining me. I'm really glad that you're here, lovely. How are you doing? Um, what was that thing about someone? Oh, gosh. <laughs> is this the toner foil? Caroline, it is the toner foil. Hello, Barbara R. Thank you for being here. How are you doing, my lovely? Um, I'm sat here crafting whilst watching. Good live as I have one of these and never use it. Well, Crafty Stacy Lou, it's time to get your mink out. Get your mink on, girl. And we're going to tone a foil the smidgens out of things um we're gonna we're gonna do a lot this evening um so tone a foiling if you do not have a toner printer it is just a black it's just a chrome monochrome printer that you would need you don't necessarily have to um have one yourself because you can go to any print shop um you can even pop down to the local library because the photocopier uses toner cartridges so you could just get a couple of copies done down at the library um nice subject changing i certainly do try to change the subject to uh what it needs to be i love you <laughs> i'll get me minks out on oh yeah well get it out get it out get it on do some stuff with it have have fun have fun with it that's all we that's all we want to do so um and also you can buy prints from various different stores as well i know there's some crafting suppliers that do um do sell and there is one technique that i don't want to say yet but we're gonna do it and when i do it you use are all gonna be like oh my god he just done did that <laughs> so let's just start off i'm gonna walk you through some of the bits that i do have so i've got some pre-printed toner foiled tags here so we're gonna be foiling those this evening and i have got some toner sheets now these are 200 gsm sheets these can be used if you wanted to just cut a little square off toner foil uh, toner foil that square and use it to die cut items out of um, it's much simpler than trying to actually foil die cuts directly um gaz find me a good one from our yes i did find you a good one from argos which was i believe it was 73.99 which is quite cheap um did you make a t-shirt um oh i haven't made a t-shirt but i'm not sure if somebody else has i mean it would be good to find out if other people have i do have my silhouette cameo which is just situated to the left of me just here this is my silhouette cameo i don't know if you guys can see it just over the microphone there this is my silhouette cameo she's lovely and beautiful and fantastic she doesn't get used a lot but you know i really ought to do that at some point is actually use her correctly i've got all these things to do crafting with and i just sit here and i'm like oh what do i do what do i do <laughs> so what we're going to do first is i think i'm going to do i'm going to do this lovely um monstera tag i think so we've got this monstera tag just here um and with every every mink machine you should get carrier sheets now these are made from a slightly different plastic a, a slightly more resistant plastic to the heat that comes off of these machines so if you were to put a laminating pouch through this it will laminate it and it will shut it so do not use a laminating pouch with this machine um because it, it just won't work <laughs> so this is my i believe it's six oh no it's this is my eight and a half i want to say eight and a half eight and a half by eight and a half carrier sheet um, I also do have some that are 12 by 12. Um, you probably use those more for scrapbooking if, you get, if you're into scrapbooking. But there are so many techniques that we can do with this, guys. So don't worry. Strap yourselves in and just wait. Because it's going to be great. I'm just going to get my brush down. Because we always need our brush. So 
I'm just prepping this on top here because I, I don't have a lot of space because I've actually pulled the machine out from underneath my desk <laughs> so that I can do this. Um, and just very much like we did with the foil press, I'm just going to cut this to the size just a little bit over what is required to cover the item that I'm trying to foil. So I'm just going to pop that down there and those down there. And all I'm going to do is just place my tag toner foil side down on the dull side of on the dull side of the um, of the foil. So it's always going to be shiny side down, no matter what type of foiling you're doing, guys. It's always going to be shiny side down. Whatever you want to foil, always is going to be shiny side down. Hello, show me how to use my mink, please. <laughs> I will certainly do that. I will certainly show you how to use your mink. So that's just to show you how to do that very quickly. But before I set that to go through the machine, what I'm going to do with a, just a light, a light brush, it doesn't have to be any specifically special brush. I know some of you girls might have makeup brushes that you can use for it, is I'm just going to give it a light dusting across. And you always do this no matter what you're foiling, because it will stop any dust, any impurities from the cardstock from... Um, from stopping the foil from attaching to the toner because any of those impurities will stop the foil from attaching to the toner. So just quickly do that. And I'm just going to pop that back on there. And usually for projects of anything between of this size and slightly larger, I would go between three and four. Um, if you were doing a, 12, a full 12 by 12 foil sheet, I would go for five, but a lot of the things you're going to be doing, you're probably going to be want to be going between two and four. So I've just preheated mine to four. I turned it on at the back here. There's a lovely little switch just at the back here. I'll tip this up so you can see it. That's the that's your power switch and that's your reverse switch in case anything gets uh, jammed in there. But if you behave properly, it sh nothing should get jammed in it. <laughs> and I just use the middle button there to set it to my fourth. And I'm just going to run this through. Does that have to be a clean brush, or does it have corn flour or anything on it? I mean, you can, if you want, the, if you want rubbish results, you can cover your brush in corn flour. If if you <laughs> if if you want to cover it in makeup and then use it, um, you can you can see what results you get with that. But I, I wouldn't really suggest it. <laughs> the Sussex Lancastrian, hello, thank you for joining us, Sarah watching on mute right now but i will watch we watch later with sound oh thank you so much for being here my lovely i really really appreciate it so as you can see it's actually coming out of the back side now hey <laughs> right just wait for that to come out because you know it always takes a little while always takes a little while And this isn't even giving me a choice. Normally, I wait for it to cool down. But what's happened is, is it's actually automatically already foiled. So there's not a lot I can do about that. <laughs> and it's already peeled. So there we go, guys. That is just so pretty. I really, really like that. That is lovely. And you can see that there's nothing that hasn't been foiled. It's all gone on there properly. There's no foil left on here where it shouldn't be. It is absolutely brilliant. Um, but you can make an anti-static bag for embossing with corn flour and a pouch. Jeez, was only asking. I'm sorry, Hannah. I was only playing. I didn't mean to be. Uh, I didn't mean to be offensive there, darling. I'm really sorry. Um, I, I, I was just playing along. <laughs> so there we go. We've got that. That is absolutely lovely. I think it is anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a... Because um, I don't have any more of my coloured toner sheets that I can use to do... To do my waste foiling. What I'm going to do is just going to take one of these black toner squares. And I'm just going to cut it down. I'm just going to cut it down. So roughly about the same size as the item that I'm wanting to foil there. 
Now these toner sheets I picked up off of eBay. So when I'm actually done with the live guys, I will get all of the links and put them in the description box. So you guys can go and go and have a good rummage round on the eBay where I got these from. Um, the woman that sold these to me is absolutely lovely. If you do have any questions, you just need to only ask her really. She's absolutely lovely. So as you can see there, I'm just going to line that up. That's fine. And I'm just going to give it, just in case I have got anything on there, is I'm just going to give it a little dust off with my brush. And all we're doing here is reverse foiling. So I'm just going to pop that on there, try and make sure that lines up. And I'm hoping that the toner isn't going to stick to... Actually, I think I might have to put in a little bit of paper as a shim because where that toner is exposed, it will attach itself to the um, it will attach itself to the uh, carrier sheet, and I don't want that. So I'd rather it just go onto a cruddy piece of paper if needs be, and I'll just run that through. Um, Caroline, this is much e this is a much simpler method of foiling, and I do have to agree, it's really good. Um, wow, an old baby sock, corn flower and a hairband. I mean, that's, why didn't I think of that? Why did I not think of that? That is such a great idea. Right, well, you can consider that stolen. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the, to the toner sheet is for reverse foiling. So um, where that took the main part of the foiling... This toner sheet will now pick up what's what was left behind. Couldn't you just print a toner? Yeah, you could. You could literally do that, and they would do it for the same price as well. Yep. Yeah. I I only picked these up um, as a, like a little starter pack because I wanted the carrier sheets, and it was cheaper to buy the the starter pack with the toner, the toner sheets, the um, the foils that I wanted. And also the carrier sheets, because I wanted the smaller carrier sheets, because I only had the big 12x12 12 12 ones. Right, let's take that out of there. And as you can see here, guys, this is why... See? That's why I put that, that paper shim in there, because I knew that that toner was going to stick. And I don't want it getting on there, because it can be a little, a, little bit of a, a little bit of a bugger to clean. So let's get that off of there. And then when we take that off, and there we go. Now I can cut that down. I can cut that down to the size, same size as what the other one was. And I've literally got two really striking toner foiled. It is absolutely brilliant. I think those are so stunning. Absolutely stunning. Because you need to stay far away from anything baby. Yeah, I do need to stay far away from anything baby. Um, oh, wow. Oh, hi, Katie. Hi. Hi, Chanel, Steve and Lana. Thank you for joining me. Um, yeah, they are really pretty. They are seriously really, really pretty. I absolutely love them. So that's a good starting point. Um, and we do have a few more of those to foil as well. So I'm going to use some of my other foils. So that was all... That was using the Crafty Critter foil. And that was the... If I remember correctly. That was the um, Blue Hollow Rainbow foil. Which is really, really nice. I like that one. Let's just move those off to the side. And I'm going to use some of this other foil. Now, I bought these from... Like I say, from this lady on... Um, on eBay. And she does some really, really nice ones. So I've got my golds, I've got my coppers, I've got my pinks, purples. There's even a black one in here if you want to foil in black. Um, I find that one a little bit not too snazzy. But I've also got rainbow hollows. I've got, I think there's some plain silver in here as well. Green. There's some really, you know, got some really, really good colours going on. And I'm just going to use one of these actually to foil the next tab. So... I'm going to do this tag next, and I'm going to use some of this rainbow foil. Now, because this hasn't come on a roll, um, you c it's uh, obviously it's a little bit more of a a little bit more of a 
problem to try and cut because it's so light. But I'm going to try and do my best with it. I like to keep mine with some cardboard, some paper or cardboard backing behind it because it makes it a lot more easier to um, manoeuvre about. So I just need to chop that little square off down there because we don't want that. And now that I've lined that all up, I'm just going to get my carrier sheet. And like I say, this this is such much uh, such a more accessible version of foiling than using the foil press, guys, because it is just so much more simpler. And again, I'm just going over with my with my uh, brush just to make sure there's no dust or anything on there, or anything that could cause any problems with the foil attaching to it going through the foiling machine. Now, I might actually do some die cutting. What sort of price are the packs of foil? Um, if you're buying from the lady or that I that I use on eBay, she sells this big starter pack for. Fifteen ninety nine. I think that was the price when I bought it. I don't know if it's gone up a little bit since then, but it was fifteen ninety nine when I first bought it, and I think that was going back last year. Um, so it's not bad. And Crafty Critter do a lot of lovely foils as well, and they they're uh, they're in um, they're in Australia, and they do ship to the UK, which is really really good. Ah, oh, hi Blakey boy. Oh, that rainbow. Oh, yes, that rainbow. Hang so, in order to use the mink when you need a laser printer, don't know why this confuses me so much. Um, so, if I explain it to you... See, look, that one's come out really, really nicely as well. So, toner, when it prints, is basically a transfer of plastic from, from the toner cartridge. It's all little specks of plastic. And it electri electronically transfers from the sheet in the belt inside the machine onto the cardstock or paper whatever you're using so with it being plastic it's going to react to heat so when you put your foil on top of it and pop it through the the toner reactivates becomes basically wet and the foil just straight up attaches to it And there we have that in that lovely rainbow. I love that. That is really, really lovely. That is so nice. And there are a few little specks where it's... You can see I didn't dust properly and a few little specks have stuck. But that is absolutely wonderful. I think that's really, really good. I like that. Let's just scrap those few little bits off there as well. because It wasn't actually stuck down, but some of it had actually caught in the... So, it's not an inkjet printer that you need. It is a laser printer. Hi, Suzette. Thank you for joining. I picked up a chip for $25. Check the office max and the replacement toner cartridge was $26. Yeah, the, Barbara, that is really good. That is a really good deal you got there. Um, okay, I like that one. <laughs> So you can stamp anything, then print it on a laser printer. You, you can, as long as you've got a scanner, as long as you've got a scanner, you can stamp and print to your heart is content. But I do have another version that we can do. If you do not have, um, if you do not have that toner printer, so I'm just going to actually move on to that one just now. I'm going to pop that to the side. And what I'm going to have to do is just quickly move my minky machine out of the way. My mink machine. So I think that's quite enough on that one. I do not advise you do this, guys. Do not ever pick up and move your mink machine, especially when it's on. It's not a good idea. I'm just an idiot and I need space. <laughs> so... There are some craft shops that sell this. Um, the one that I'm going to show you is a particular brand that I know I use and I enjoy. Um, but there are very many different variants out of there, out there, guys. And this is called Foil Reactive Embossing Powder. So you can actually stamp any image, heat emboss it with this, 
and then you can you can actually foil that image so and that is exactly what we're going to do right now so i'm just going to grab a stamp out of my uh, out of my little box here i'm sure some of you might recognize this i have anna griffith's smaller mink too yep yeah. And it's exactly, a lot of them are very similar in design and button-wise as well. I think they've done that just so that people can kind of just understand what they're doing, really. So I'm just going to cut that card down a little bit. Because I don't want to be putting a great big dirt piece of card like this through the mink. And all I'm going to do is get my... You don't necessarily have to use a watermark... I'm going to because it's the most simple it's the most simple one to use as long as as long as the ink will um, obviously let embossing powder attached to it you can use anything that you've got going on so just set that to the side for a moment grab that down let's put that up there for a moment and just like you would with any other embossing powder, I'm just literally going to put it on, let it catch, and you can see it's, it's you can kind of see it's caught there. I'll just pop that to the side. I'm going to get my heat tool, and all I'm going to do, just like I would with any other one, is I'm just going to heat set it. And just heat set it as you would normally, and I shall show you how it will look. So, it, you should have something that looks like that. And you can just see where it's just a little bit sparkly. That's from where the heat has set, which is brilliant. And just because I can, and I've got this little scrap of uh, rainbow foil, I'm going to put that on there. Just make sure it's the right size. Yep, that's the right size. And oh, what have I done with that brush? Well, I've got plenty of other brushes. I can use another one. Oh, there it is. I've put some. This is what I get for being live, guys. I put things safe. I'm just going to give it a little brush, just like I've done with everything else, just to make sure that there's nothing sticking to it. And I'm going to pop the foil on top. Put that in my transfer folder. By my carrier sheet. And I'm just going to pop that in the mink whilst I bring it down so you know I've not done anything I'm nothing differently other than heat embossing and you can do this with any stamp you want you can do this with sentiment stamps you can do this with um, well pretty much anything when well, you know any stamp you could do this with floral stamps there really are some lovely things that you can do with this and it really does kind of bring in a little bit of what you can do with the foil press because instead of having the dies to stamp you've got you just stamp and it's just so much oh it's just brilliant I love it so much <laughs> here we go this is just coming out now now this may overfoil because I oh no oh no oh, 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 that is perfect. There we go, guys. Look at that. How beautiful! Look how beautiful that shell is. That's just blooming amazing, isn't it? I love this so much. This is great. And I can also reverse foil that onto a piece of toner as well. So if you've bought any, th any from Crafty Critter, um, any of the colour toner sheets, you can use any of the colour toner sheets. But um, unfortunately, I'm trying to save the few that I have left. So I'm just going to use another piece of that black toner sheet that I cut up. And I'm going to reverse foil this straight onto that. 
I don't see why not. It is a, it's an absolute wonderful, wonderful thing to do. So where have I put my scissors? Oh, there they are. I'm back. Mum was on the phone. Welcome back. Hello, Syl. Thank you for joining me. Embossing pad. Oh yes, we do have the the link on to the Brutus Munro website where you can buy the embossing powder that I was using. Thank you very much, Christine. Um, so the mink is great for stamps. At the foil press, press is great for. Yeah, that is correct. That is absolutely one hundred percent correct, Rhonda. Absolutely. And you know, I I do quite enjoy using both. That each one has its own kind of real. Um, its own real benefits and and again some uh, and some setbacks because a lot of people do find that the um that the mink is a lot easier to use and you know when you can just get block toner print uh prints done and you can just stamp and die cut whatever you want in foil Oh yes, you don't even necessarily have to have a laminator or even a mink machine to be able to foil because as long as you've got something that sticks, the foil will stick to it. So you can use the same glue that you would use for um, gilding. For gilding, you can use double-sided sellotape. There are so many different things that you can do to foil with, but. These are the ones that I tend to find I enjoy the most because I I like instant results. I like very minimal. I like very minimal. Um, I I I I'm a man. I want it done and I want it done yesterday. I t I don't want to be sitting around waiting for glue to dry. I <laughs> I just want to get what I want, get it done and get it get it ready you know get it ready get it done get it sorted that that's uh, kind of me and there we go oh, that's absolutely even even that is oh i think that's beautiful that is absolutely stunning how well that's come out and again there's not a single speck of foil left there where it shouldn't be <laughs> Remember, oh yes, please remember to like and subscribe and you can also follow me over on Handcrafted by Gaz on Facebook and also on Instagram. So if you do have any questions, I'm always more than happy to answer. And hopefully very soon I'm in, I'm in chats. I'm in chats. I'm talking with people. Uh, hello Simon, welcome, how are you? No need to be sorry for being late. I'm very glad you're here. Thank you for coming. I, I am in talks with people at the moment to get a handcrafted by Gaz um, email address set up. So you'll be able to direct any questions you have to my handcrafted by Gaz email address. And also because I've got the die cut for this as well, I'm just going to casually die cut it because I can. I'm just going to line that up. I'm very sorry guys, I'm having to do this out off to the side because the mink's in the way. Let me just move that out of the way. Again, I do not advise anyone to be picking up a scalding hot minking machine. I have asbestos fingers and a death wish, so <laughs> don't don't go. Oh, Tippy Tempest! Hello, how are you? Thank you for coming. I didn't even knew you knew I existed on here. Here we go. Hello, Mr. Aaron. How are you, darling? Can regular embossing powder work? Um, I've not tried with regular embossing powder, but that's something we can do. I, I don't think it does. If you were to stamp with a gilding glue and ink pad, you'll find that your 12 packs of... <laughs> My 26 packs of gilding... Don't even joke, right? I'm going to show you now. I've given away... Right? I've given away six packs of this glue. Six packs! And this is what I've got left. <laughs> so I've given away six bottles of gilding flake glue. And that is what I've got left. So, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> you can use it. 
I won't. I've got PTSD from using Gilding Flakes, so I will never ever use it. Subscribed a while ago and didn't even get a notification. I came to YouTube to listen to sad songs and hear you were alive. Oh, well, I'm better than sad songs, so you can sit and listen to me talk rubbish about about crafting. And there we go. The lovely little. I mean, even if you know what I could do with that now, if I wanted to, I've got a little Xyron machine down here. I've got a little Xyron machine, so I can put that in there. And I do not know how the hell this thing works. Oh, you pull it. So. Ooh. That was a noise, wasn't it? And now, he says. I'm going to take that off there. That's now got an adhesive back. I can use that as a little sticker on something. So if I want to decorate, you know, if I want to stick that directly onto a card, I can. If I want to, I don't know, pop it on my computer as a little decoration, I can. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. But I'll pop that back on there for now because I'll probably use that on a card another day. And I don't want to waste it. <laughs> And I'll also show you block foiling as well, so that you can use it for die cutting. Um, let me just pop that over there. And I should pop that back there. Let's try and clear a little bit of space up. Now, where did I put that machine? Oh, there it is. I should bring that back over here. Bring that down here. Right. So for block foiling, so if I say I want to die cut 1500, well, maybe not 1500, maybe if I want to die cut some butterflies, right? And I'm like, oh, actually, I really wish that these butterflies would have nice bright pink wings. I could just come along, bring out, I've already used some of this foil, you can see. And this is why I'm just going to prove the point of having the cardboard in there. If that makes it so much easier for the foil to slip back in. <laughs> so I'm just going to get my scissors. And we're just going to do a little block foil. And like I said, guys, I did do a foil. I did foil. I hot foiled a die cut yesterday. And that was a little bit complicated, or at least I, f I find it to be complicated anyway. So I'm just going to block foil that. It is only a little bit. What did I do with my carrier sheet? Oh, there it is. Marvellous, marvellous. So I'm just going to pop that on there, guys. I think that's a little bit too small, isn't it? It is a little bit too small. And you know what? I'm going to show you what happens when you don't actually cover the cover your cover it with foil correctly. Go on then, in you go, in you go. I haven't set that on reverse, have I? No. Why is that not? This is the joys of being got live, guys. <laughs> Snail it, snail it good, or is it a shell? <laughs> Deuce. Um, it helps me see. Uh, my Twitch name, uh, Tibby, is <coughs> Cowplant Games. Not that I'm on there very much anymore. Um, Christine, don't, you don't need to stop chatting, love. It's fine. It's a uh, Fabon Kashi shell. Oh, is it? Okay. Any chance you would sell me one... Oh God, to me it helps me. I strain to a headache, otherwise I won't chat. Oh, bless you. So I am going to show you guys just what happens when e you don't cover all of your... So you see there, there's some exposed toner. And that's what happens when you leave exposed toner. It will stick. But all I'm going to do to remedy that is 
I'm sure all of you guys, acetone, a little bit of acetone, otherwise known as nail polish remover. You can use it to get rid of the toner off of here. Now, it might be a bit difficult because some of the cards stuck to it. That doesn't normally happen. But I'll just go straight in with that. And it'll even pick up any specks of foil that have been left behind. It just brings it all off. And what I'll do is I'll just encourage that card that's stuck there to come off. There we go. And then literally as soon as I do that, just a few wipes and it's all gone. So if you do end up making a mistake like that, a little bit of acetone just completely clears it all out. You've got nothing to worry about. And here we go for the peel and reveal on the foil. So that's a lovely block foil block foil we've got there. And what I shall do is just find a little intricate die quickly to cut it out with. Um, I'm not sure if I've got one in front of me that I can use, but I'll find one. I'm pretty good at finding, finding things. Here we go hoping there might have been a oh actually we could use that one couldn't we we could use that one hopefully that will fit if it doesn't fit i'll find another one it's not a big deal then it does fit so this is just a surprise as a surprise sentiment i'm just gonna pop that on there and shove that on there with a little bit of dip to make sure it doesn't go running off anywhere. And if I do some juggling about, I can move me, move me mink out of the way. Again, I do not promote moving a scalding hot mink unless you've got a death wish or you're me. Um, where's my little folder gone? Carrier folder. I thought I had it here in front of me. <laughs> Again, this is the joys of being live, guys. I don't know what I do with half the stuff I've got. <laughs> and it is in front of me. I'm just looking everywhere for the thing that is directly in front of me. <laughs> Not a problem. Right, let's just flip that because I don't want that. Oh no, that was actually flipped, wasn't it? So, because I am trying to flip and reverse it so the so it doesn't buckle so quickly before I have to buy some new ones. Um, good to know, guys. I haven't needed yet, but I've been overly protective of the carrier sheet. Um, yeah, it's a good little handy tip to know because it took me a little while when I first got it to figure that out. Um, any chance... Suzette and watch the previous video he demonstrates it. Oh, thank you for saying that, Suzette. It was beautiful. I'm very jealous. <laughs> Do you have any Disney Stitch things? I do not have any Disney Stitch things, but I can order some off of a particular third-party website because I know they have some. Um, I had it for a while and only found it yesterday and used it for the first time. I'm in love. Oh, that's great. And I totally get it. Oh, that's great. Cool, cool. This is such a great... Um, oh, thank you so much, Caroline. I really appreciate that. So here we go. And all I've done is just cut that from that. And it's it's just a foiled... A foiled sentiment ready to go straight on a card. That's. Hi, Mason. Just ready to go straight onto a card, just like that. Nice, easy foil. So if you are, if you've got the foil and you've got a bit of toner sheet, or you could print a toner sheet, you 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 don't need to be stuck for thinking. Oh, I've not got this coloured miri or <coughs> what have you. There's a lot that you can do with this, guys. I was just drying out a little bit there, so I needed to get a little bit of drink in me. Um, this is one that I actually did the other day, because you can, even when even after you foiled it, you can still do things on top of it. So just the, when you do normal foiling, not reverse foiling that is, so when you do normal foiling, all I did was foil this shell, and I went over it with a little bit of ink to make it look like, well, a real shell, to be honest. And uh, that's where, and that's how that came out. 
and I just gave it a little bit of a bend to give it a bit of dimension and that will get stuck on a card at some point. It's just really nice and easy things to do. So it doesn't matter what type of foil you use in these machines. It 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 will it will work as long as it's not hot foil it's, as long as it's not foil that is designed to be used with the heat press. Because those foils will overfoil and they will and they will not foil correctly and it will look like an absolute mess. If you want me to show you that, I can. It's not a problem. Um, but I think, actually, I've kind of gone over everything that I can kind of go over with this. Unless there is anything that you guys would specifically like to see. Um, I'm more, Again, I'm more than happy to do that as well. So I'm just going to have a quick drink. That machine kicks out a lot of heat. <laughs> I have my mink in a box to give away. It may just take it out of the box. Take it out of the box, Rhonda. Don't leave it in the box. Don't give it away. Don't be so silly. Get it out and use it. Get some foil and have some fun. Because the different, like I say, the difference between this and the, hot, the, the heat press, this is results every time. This is literal results every time. You don't have to worry about getting the right heat setting. You haven't got to worry about putting the correct amount of time on it or anything like that this will literally just pew, straight through you need to get some angel stuff off of stitch to make lana a card for her birthday <laughs> well i will have to see what i can order off of um a particular third party website try the gilding glue yeah i can do it with gilding glue that is not a problem i shall stamp out the gilding glue there we go, I've just turned that off, apparently. We'll just pop that back on just in case we do need to do any more. Let's get the gilding glue. Right, so I'll just clear that stamp off. Oh, it does help if my... Get my little cloth. A nice clean. And I oh, shall get a fresh piece of card out. And for using the and for using the gilded glue on a stamp you do just want a dry ink pad which you put your glue onto. I'm sure a lot of you probably already know that. I'm just going to fill that with plenty of glue, so... And clear away that excess, because apparently... I over... I over glued that pad. Right. Just going to stamp that out. Take that bit off. And I'm just going to leave that to turn blue. Once the glue turns blue, it'll, it's ready to have... Um, it's ready to have the foil put on top of it. But I am just going to clean this stamp off straight away because I don't want the glue sticking to the stamp as such. Try and give it a uh, give it a helping hand. I think that should be about ready. What for? I'll use the pink foil. I'll just cut a little square of that off. Now this foil has folded over, so it might not have the best effect on it. But that will teach me for to to um and this acts pretty much as I'm sure you guys know as like a rub on transfer. 
So most of you should know about Rebon transfers. And I'm just going to give it a nice good Now this is the first time I've ever done this guys, so this may come this may come out good, it may come out bad. But this is the first so you know this is the first time I have ever done this with foil. Um I know it I know it does work, but it's a technique that obviously I've not I've not personally done before. So let's see. It's not perfect, but it's not the worst thing I've seen. There you go. How's that? That's brutal. Actually, that came out really well, all things considering. That's really good. So there you go, guys. That's it with... Um... Um, this foil is um, some kind of pink. It's not rose gold. As we learnt this week from Debbie Fisher, you can foil the negative onto a... Yeah, you can you can do that and fill it in with glitter. Um, as long as it's a sticky surface, I mean, I could... You could do the, you could get the same effect with double-sided tape if you were to just stick it across as well. Or even you could just use some of your stick and spray. If you've got the permanent. That will also do it. Um, so there we go. But I think that's pretty much, uh, I think that is pretty much everything that I, got, I can teach you guys regarding this. Um, well, I can always uh, show you how to, f it's just pretty much the same kind of theory as gilding flakes, except with a lot less mess. Oh, there was another technique as well that I was told, but I don't think I have. I don't think I have the right pastes. Mm. I don't think I've got the right pastes. So I can't show it, or otherwise I would have done. So what I'll do is I'll just run a little strip of double sided tape down the card. And because this foil doesn't act, this foil doesn't actually have the adhesive in it, and that's the difference between the hot foil and this foil. Hot foil has the adhesive built into it. This is just plain foil that you can um, you can stick with. Because when you do the toner foiling, it's the toner that actually becomes the adhesive that sticks it. So there we go. And actually, Hannah, that Debbie Fisher thing comment that you made, I believe it was you that actually told her that you could do that. So I wouldn't say it's a Debbie Fisher comment. It was actually um, it was actually you that taught people how to do that, not uh, not her. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure I do. And there we go. Even when you've just missed a little bit, you can still go over it. It still gives actually quite a nice effect, I find. It's very nice. <sighs> oh, you're so welcome, Barbara. It's not a problem at all. Um, she did, Kim. She doesn't know she thinks of these things. <laughs> Indeed, she doesn't know that she thinks of these things. Uh, Mary Pat, thank you so much for saying that I'm a pro at foiling. Oh, my gosh. Um, it is quite a nice little thing to do, and I find it a lot more controllable and a lot more... Um, containable than gilding flakes. As much as I love them, they are an absolute nightmare to get anything done with. So there we go. So you've learned how to... Well, let's see. Let's just quickly go over everything that I've done. And then we can... Uh... So, we've learned how to... Glue and foil, stick and foil. We've learnt how to tone a foil a positive. We've learnt how to tone a foil a negative. <laughs> and we've done um, 
some negatives onto. Oh, we could actually even do negatives onto onto glue. You could actually just put some of that gilding glue straight across, and then. Well, Hannah, um, I don't think she did. Um, <laughs> I genuinely don't think she did. Um, we've learnt how to reverse foil uh, and make it sticky on the back as well. So we can just use it straight onto a project. Um, and what else have we done? I think that's pretty much everything we've done. It's not been a bad hour. It's not been a bad hour at all. And we've also learnt how to foil and make uh, foil and die cut for sentiments. So I, th I think that's a pretty good coverage of everything that you can do. Um, just remember, guys, that if you do want this uh, this powder, you can get it from Brutus Munro. There are various other shops that sell it as well. I don't think Crafters Companion do it, unfortunately. But this is a really great thing to have in your arsenal, especially if you just want something a little sparkly on, on your card. Um, Lynn Morton, thank you so much for being here, lovely. I didn't realise you'd come in. Um, you're more than welcome. I'm more than happy to show off what I can, where I can, and how I can. Um, so do you, if you guys have any more questions, I'm more than happy to answer. If not, um, I think we'll call it there. But I think it's, uh, I think it's been quite a good little demonstration of what the foiling machine can do. Well, Suzette, now's the time to get it out. Get it out. Get it out with your favourite stamps. Have you got any space stamps? Oh my god. Space stamps. If you've got Spaceman stamps or something, you could literally stamp stamp that out, emboss it, silver foil him. He's got an entire silver outline, and you can. Oh wow. And then the reverse foiling of that would just look brilliant as well on a card. Oh my god. And you could do it with planets. I don't know if you got any of you guys have got the Cosmic Collection from Crafter's Companion. I mean, that is my favourite collection of all time from them. I, I'm i not very... Um, I'm not very... You know, I'm not... I'm not. I'm just very fond of that collection. I really, really love it. Um, <laughs> and the, you could bring foiling into that and it would look stunning. Um... Thank you so much, Corinne. Um, thank you, Kirsty. Um, Rhonda, I'm glad I could I, I could be of assistance. Um, my foil press is due to come out this weekend. Brilliant. I'm glad to hear it. Um, I'm so glad that, you know, I've just been able to help you guys and kind of put point you in the right direction when it comes to foiling, especially with these machines. Barbara, oh, that hour was fast. It was really, really fast. <laughs> I'm going to research foiling with a laminator. You can still, you can use a laminator. You can use it. It's just getting the right one with the right heat settings. Um, like I said at the beginning of the live, the um, the mink machine, especially the big one, the big one has four rollers, two top, two bottom. Um, and all of these rollers are heated on this machine. Um, I have tried laminating, uh, laminate, laminate foiling, and I didn't get very good results. This, this is what gave me the best results that I've ever had doing it. So um, it's a very good thing to go research. If you can find a laminator that does it, absolutely great. And I hope I hope that you do. I really do. Because no one should be without heat foiling like this. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, thank you, Susa. I really do appreciate that. Um, thank you, Kim. I will see you later. Uh, my next live will probably be on Monday. And I'm going to be looking. I'm going to be looking at focusing on actually making something on my next live. So I'm thinking I could pull out um, a couple of collections. Actually, I think I've got some stamping. I'm going to pull out my stamping up stamps. I'm going to pull out my space stamping up stamps, and I'm going to incorporate some of the bits from the cosmic collection into it, and we're going to see what we get. And of course, there will be foiling on that as well. So come and join me for that on Monday night at half past seven GMT. Um, I can't remember exactly what times those are on the East, West and Central times in America. I'm really, really sorry. Um, I believe it's 11.30 in the morning. I think it's 2.30 in the afternoon. And I can't, I, I'm sorry, I just genuinely cannot remember all of it. I'm so sorry, guys. But come and join me at 7.30 GMT Monday night where I'm going to be pulling out some stamping up stuff and my cosmic collection again. And we're going to make a brilliant foil card just to round the, week, just to round the whole thing off. 
and then we'll move on to something new. Um, please do be sure to, as Corinne just said, please be sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell for my notifications. Um, I, I'm just so glad that you guys are all here and you give me this platform to work on. You have all helped me so much through a little bit of a rough time at the moment. So... I just cannot thank you enough. So big hearts to all of you. I will see you all on Monday night. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, guys. And I will see you all on Monday. Bye.